Hello Grade 11s and welcome to this lesson on completing the square. When solving a quadratic equation, there are various methods or techniques we can use to find the value of the unknown variable. These methods include factorization, the quadratic formula and completing the square. Today we are going to have a closer look at the method of completing the square. Let's join Tabuho as he learns how to solve for x by completing the square. But what is this solve by completing the square? Completing the square is another method we use to solve a quadratic equation. In this case though, we only use the method when specifically asked to. This method combines the principle that you can do anything to an equation as long as you do it to both sides as a whole and the methodology of factorizing the difference of squares in order to solve for the unknowns in a quadratic equation. Wow, can you show me this method? Yes, of course. Let me use this example here. As always, the first step is to make sure that the equation is in its simplest standard form. In this equation, we need to first take out a common factor of 2 and divide both sides by it. Next, we take the constant over to the right-hand side of the equation. It's important at this point to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is positive 1. If it's not, you'll have to divide each term by this coefficient. In this equation, the coefficient of x squared is already 1, so we can move on to the next step. In this step, we complete the square. To do this, we need to multiply b by a half and square it. Which gives us 25. We then add it to both sides. You can do anything to an equation as long as you do it to both sides as a whole which gives us a perfect square trinomial here on the left hand side, which I'm going to write as the perfect square. We now have a bracket squared equal to a number on the right hand side. Simply take square roots on both sides. Remember, when you square root both sides, you must get a negative and a positive answer. In this case, you get x minus 5 equals to 6, or x minus 5 equals to negative 6. These two equations are solved separately to give the two final answers. I think I've got that, but I think I might need to do a few more on my own if I want to get the hang of it. I think you're right, Deboho. The more practice you get, the better you'll get at it. From Deboho's lesson, we should be able to see that the method of completing the square to solve for x is very much a step-by-step -step process. Let us now join Lizelle as she talks us carefully through steps of completing the square. If you solve an equation by completing the square, you're going to be following a very, very set method. It's not hard, but you need to remember what the steps are and you need to execute them correctly. Now, let's have a look at our first example. This one's not very hard. It really isn't too bad. The first step when you're completing the square will be to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is 1. Now in this example the coefficient of x squared is already 1 so it's a relatively simple example not to worry. Then what you do is you have a look at your constant term. My constant term in this case is negative 1 and you move the constant term over the equals. So step one, move your constant term over the equals, get rid of it, right? Well, you're not really getting rid of it because it's still there, but it's not on the left-hand side. And remember, when you take it over the equals, the sign changes. Then you're going to have a look at the coefficient of x. That's the number standing in front of x, and the number in front of x in this case is negative 2. What you're going to do with that number is you're going to halve it, square it, and add it both sides, right? So this was step one, move 
constant. My second step is to halve, square, and add both sides. And this is now actually where I am busy completing the square. So I say half of negative 2 is negative 1. When I square negative 1, it gives me plus 1. And it will always be a positive number that you're adding in here. Now at this point, what I've done is I've tampered with my equation. And remember guys, the golden rule with equations, whatever you do on the one side must also be done on the other. So I'm also going to put a positive one on the right hand side. Now, by doing this step, what you have done is you have created a complete square on your left hand side. So this x squared minus 2x plus 1 is a complete square. What does it mean? It means it can be factorized into one bracket squared. In other words, two identical terms will emerge from here. Let's check. x minus 1, everything squared will give me that if I multiply it back out. So the next step, step number 3, is now to factorize the left hand side. Right, all done and let's just add the 1 and 1 together on that side and that gives me 2. Step number 4 is now to take the square root on both sides. And remember we're still being true to our rules for equations. As long as I take the square root on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I'm not changing the properties of my equation. So step number 4 we're going to square root. Right, let's get a different color pen going here. Square root and square root. Right, so the answer for the square root of x minus 1, everything squared, is quite simply just x minus 1. Now remember guys, because this is a quadratic equation, because I'm dealing with an x squared, I need two answers for x. Now, if you just write on the right hand side equals square root of 2, you're only going to get one solution. So what you need to remember is that you have to say plus or minus 2. So that is the square rooting bit. Your next step is now just, let's call that step number 5, solve. And what I like to do is I like to do the two answers separately. So I'm going to say, right, my one solution is x minus 1 equal to the square root of 2. And my other solution is x minus 1 equal to the negative square root of 2. Getting x on its own on the left hand side, I'm going to say x is equal to 1 plus root 2. And on this side, x is equal to 1 minus root 2. Now, at this point in the question, you'll have to have a look at the instructions. If the instructions said, leave your answer in simplest square, um, in simplest third form rather, then this is perfectly okay. However, they might say give your answers correct to one decimal place or two decimal places, and in that case, we're going to bring up our calculator. So 1 plus square root of 2 equals, and that is 2,41. Let's do it to two decimal places. 2,41. And then 1 minus the square root of 2. And that is minus 0, 0,41. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. We certainly hope that you enjoyed our lesson on the method of completing the square. And remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Equations and Inequalities task video. Goodbye.